Do permutations and combinations throw you for a loop? Do you find yourself wondering, what's the difference between these two things? This video is gonna go over some main differences between permutations and combinations. Let's first start with combinations, because I think most people are most familiar with that one. When we're talking about combinations, order doesn't matter. Some keywords you might want to be looking for when you're looking for a combination problem would be words like select or a choice. Let's take the example of a teacher, say, who wants to pick groups of three in her classroom. So Ms. Taylor wants to pick groups of three. How many different ways are there of selecting those three students from five students? Let's take a look at that. If you're wondering how I knew that was a combinations problem, let me just show you my thinking. This situation is a combinations problem because we can pick those three students out of the five and it doesn't matter the order. So let me give you a better example of where order would matter. Let's say that I had five students and I'm trying to decide who's going to be president, vice president, and secretary. The first person that I pick, if they're president, then I pick the second person and their vice president. Then I pick the third person and their secretary. That's different than saying that if I pick the third person first, they'll be president. Does that make sense? So in this case, we just want groups of three. It doesn't matter if I have person one, two, and three, or I have person two, one, and three, or if person three, two, and one, those are just a few different orders I can have for this grouping. All of these groups are the exact same, so they're still involving the same people. Versus in my president, vice president, and secretary situation, it does matter. If I pick the first person first and they're president, that's different than if they're vice president. Hopefully that clears up a little bit how I know this is a combinations problem versus a permutation. Let's go back to solving that. So as you can see, I went ahead and put the combinations formula here. There's another way that you commonly see this notation. Let me just show you that as well. In this case, n is the number of people in the whole pool that we're picking from. In this case, it's gonna be five. We wanna choose three people from that pool. So that is gonna be my r. So maybe make a little note. n is your total possible number of people for your pool. r is how many people you're selecting. Next, we're gonna go ahead and plug this in and solve. I can see that, again, and if you forget, put a little n and put a little r just to remind yourself. So I can see that my n is five, so I'm gonna have five factorial over, then I'm gonna do n minus r factorial, so five minus three factorial, multiplied by my r again with a factorial. I can go ahead and write this out and see how we can solve this factorial a little bit easier. I went ahead and just expanded this so we can really see how we're simplifying and making those ones. So again, I know one divided by one is one. This two can be divided by this two to make my ones. This three can be divided by this three to make my ones. And I can see that I have five times four over two times one. This would give me 20 over two. I can simplify this to get 10 possible combinations. So there are 10 possible ways that I can group my five students into groups of three. A few other points about combinations are that we wanna remember that in combinations an item can be used more than once. Also, order doesn't matter. Remember those things when you're thinking about combinations. Now let's take a look at a situation that involves a permutation. When we are looking for problems that are gonna use permutations, you're usually looking for a keyword like arrangement. You might also be looking for the word arrange or first place, second place. All of these imply that order matters. Permutations are an ordered arrangement where nothing is ever used more than once. So this is the idea of not replacing it. When I pick someone to be my president, that person is no longer eligible to be the vice president. They're no, then that person is no longer eligible to be the secretary. Things like that, this is that idea of without replacement, like no item is being used more than once. 
Also something to keep in mind is that order of the items does make a difference as I've illustrated in that president, vice president, secretary situation. Let's take a look at an example of a permutation. You can see here that I've written the formula for permutations. And just a reminder, n is the number of items possible. This is not changed um, and is not any different than combinations. R is the number of items selected. Notice that we have a slight difference in our formula here in that we don't have the denominator multiplied times R factorial. So let's look at an example thinking about a police station. In how many ways could we make lineups of six people if we have eight total subjects? Now again, I'm thinking I have eight total subjects and I'm going to pick six people. And if you're wondering, does order matter or not? In a lineup, if we think about it, order does matter, right? Each suspect is arranged based on the number of that they're standing in front of. So in other words, if you're standing in person number one spot, that would be different than if we put you in person number three spot, right? So that spot, it's very similar to thinking of a president, vice president, secretary line of thinking, or even first, second, third, fourth. We've got where order matters here. Let's go ahead and plug our numbers into our formula. So again, I have eight total people. I want lineups of six. So now I'm going to do my eight factorial over the quantity of eight minus six factorial. And then let's go ahead and write this out as well. I can see that my two and two simplify to make ones, and then obviously my ones do the same. So I'm left with eight times six times five times four times three. When I solve this out, I get 20,160 possible lineups. Something else to consider, when we compare the amount of permutations compared to combinations, permutations will always be much greater, that they will have a greater number than the number of combinations. This just comes from the fact that in combinations, it wouldn't matter which order I put my six people, right? When I think about combinations and I know that I have a person who's you know, I'm picking three people. It doesn't matter the order I pick those people because three, two, one, one, two, three, and two, one, three will all be considered the exact same combination. However, in permutations, you can see that that would be three different permutations. This is why the amount of permutations is always gonna be greater than combinations. I hope you found this video helpful and you've now got a better idea of how to tell the difference between a combination and a permutation.